Welcome along everyone. Um, today I thought I'd do a bit of a garage vid. Uh, I haven't done one for a while so I thought I'd give you a bit of a break from me screaming on a bike that's got too much power for me to handle. Um, today has been, it's been really lovely outside. I went for a quick ride on my bike and one thing I thought about is my visor. This is my visor, believe it or not. But it's actually a photochromatic one which is essentially light reactive. So like the glasses you can get that react to the sun when you walk out same concept um, now I have had this one for about a year possibly and I used to run with these which are the pin locks now if you don't know what pin lock is essentially what this does it goes on the inside you can actually see it on the inside there excuse the dirt um, so it creates a seal around the edge you can see there's a rubber seal around here and what that does is create a barrier of air essentially between the visor and this so that stops the main visor fogging up this is also it, um, i believe it absorbs some moisture as well what i wanted to do in this video today is just run you through um, a bit of pros and cons of both uh, run you through why you actually need one of these and sort of who it's for and also i've got a few comparison videos that i've taken in the sun earlier just to go through which works better how they react how dark they go things like that so that's what I'm going to go through today, so stick around if you're interested. So first of all, who are these for then? So for me, I mean to be fair, it's kind of laziness, but also it's very convenient. It's there, you don't need to worry about it, you ride out on a really nice day, it just changes, slowly tints itself, so you haven't got to worry about taking sunglasses. Personally, I hate riding with sunglasses on because I find they push on my temples quite a bit. Um, they also your ears tend to ache after a while where it's being crushed against the um, the stems of the sunglasses as well. So this is a, an option for me which really works. So why would you want one of these then? Obviously it's not for people that have got the drop down sun visor inside the helmets. Let's go through with a scenario for the moment. So say you've planned with your friends that you're going to go down to the seaside because the weekend's meant to be lovely. Um, you're going to ride down to the seaside, get some fish and chips or whatnot. Normally if it's going to be sunny you want to take sunglasses or a tinted visor. Um, now the reason for that is it, if you're riding into the sun it can be really painful, gives you a headache and all sorts. Uh, there's a lot of grey areas with the legalities about a tinted visor in the UK. They're not actually grey areas but in regards to what the police will actually act upon is, is where the grey area comes into it. If you're riding on a bright sunny day with a tinted visor police very rarely say anything or pull you over or anything like that, that you get no attention when the attention starts happening is when you ride well either you ride with one of those garish gold pearlescent or blue pearlescent visors and they just look a bit but they're very show when the attention really starts happening is when the day either grays over so you get clouded you get cloud coverage or you start riding with those visors at night that's when the police start getting involved because it's hampering your vision but also in a legal sort of standpoint it's kind of careless so you, that's when they start getting involved so going to the seaside as I was mentioning you've, the main option that people go with is taking two visors so they'll take a clear one and a tinted one they'll put the tinted one on in the day and then on the way home they'll put the clear one on now that works but then you've got to worry about taking and remembering and taking your visor with you. You've got to get a visor bag. You, you've then got to think about how you're going to get it there. Um, if you're fine, it's fine if you've got a top box like I have. But if you haven't, are you going to put it in your jacket? Are you, like how are you going to take a backpack specifically for that? More faff than is worth it. So you've got two other options without one of these you either ride home with the visor up the whole way which is not ideal because we've all taken a bug to the face at 60 70 mile an hour and it's not pleasant uh, or you spend the entire day worrying about what time you're going to leave just because you you need to make sure you've got plenty of time to get back without it going dark neither options are really a great one it's more stress than they're worth basically so that's when these come in We'll start with Pinlock because it's a cheaper option. So pros and cons. So this, a standard Pinlock, you're looking, depending on your helmet, all of this is dependent on the helmet, but for my specific helmet, a Pinlock is around 25 pounds, depending where you get it from. 
and that gives you just a standard pin lock. To get that as a photochromatic one, you're looking 55, 60 pounds, which is great. Now these last about a year. So if you're keeping your helmet for three or four years and you use it all the time, you use it in the winter and everything, you're gonna need like two or three of these at, as a minimum, which is why I ended up going for this. I'll explain more in a minute. The other thing that's great about these is they're quite, they're widely available. You can tell, have a look at your, your visor. If you have these small, if you have these small notches on the inside of your visor, it means it, it accepts a pin lock. You'll just have to get one specific for your helmet. Coming on to the negatives of this, as I mentioned, they only last about a year. So if you're spending 55, 60 pounds every year, like it's an extra 30 pounds on top of normal pin lock. So it still adds up. The only other negative with one of these is it doesn't go quite as dark. You'll see in the comparison video shortly, but because it's behind a layer of Perspex being the main visor, it's essentially like trying to get tanned behind a pane of glass. Although the UVs do go through, because all of these are UV driven, so higher the UV levels in the day, the darker they get. But behind a visor, it still takes a lot longer to go dark. And they also don't go as dark. So I found that if you're riding into directly into the sun and you've got the sun in your eyes, this, it will take the glare off of your eyes so you won't be squinting. But this, I can ride without worrying. Like it's, it, there's no stress on my eyes at all. So that's obviously the pin lock. Now let's go on to the main visor. Pros of this is it changes a lot quicker. As I said before, it's like this is direct to the sun, so it's the outside layer that's taking in the UV, so there's nothing blocking it. The other pro of this is when your pin lock runs out after a year, you just change the pin lock. You don't need to change the full visor, which means if you are going to keep your helmet for three to four years like I do, it, it becomes cheaper to do this option than get the pin locked every year. Now these are, again dependent on helmet, they're about 150 pounds. So it is quite an investment just for the visor. However, if you're considering these are 50 pound a year and you keep it for four years, this, is, this works if you're riding your bike all the time because pin locks don't, won't wear out anywhere near as quickly if you don't use them all the time. But if you're spending 50 pound a year on one of these, or 150 pound on one of these, after three, four years, this becomes a cheaper option. Plus it's better. Besides price, the only other negative with this comes with the fact that they're less available. Now you only find the light reactive inserts tend to be more across the range of helmets, whereas the full visor tends to only be for a lot, some of the premium helmets. Now I say premium, I say premium, I mean the premium brand. So like this is a Shoei RYD, so it's the bottom of a Shoei range. Um, so it's not expensive. It's still classed as a premium brand, so shall we will obviously invest in things like this, whereas the lower brands won't. One thing I will mention before we nip over to the clips is that a lot of people are worried about these changing very quickly, um, and I, I don't know whether it'll ever affect like an epileptic person or something along those lines. Um, but with this main visor, I don't even notice it's changed. The only time I notice that it's actually gone dark is when I look in a mirror or I flip it up and I'm like, oh, it's bright because you don't realize it's gone dark so gradually. I have got an interior shot of a helmet, uh, of my helmet with this reacting. So you, you barely notice it's changed until I flip up the visor and then you'll see how dark it's actually got. One of the other questions that comes with this is how quickly does it go back to being clear? Now, it's, like I said before, they're UV driven. So as soon as that UV source is taken away, there's no reaction. One way I'd, I'd explain it is like turning on the hot tap is how it reacts with the sun. So you know, you turn it on and it slowly gets warmer and warmer and warmer until it's really, really hot. That's the kind of process with it getting darker. But you know, as soon as you turn that cold tap on, it goes, it goes cold very quickly in almost like half the time. Same kind of concept. As soon as you walk indoors, as soon as you go under a tunnel, this starts going back to clear. So there's never that worry that as soon as I put my helmet on, you could ride home, like the scenario we mentioned earlier, going to the beach, you could ride home in the sun and as the light fades, this will get clearer. It's, it's simple, it's easy, 
you never have to worry about it. It's just there all the time. If I forget my sunglasses, it's there. Doesn't matter. Uh, I don't need to worry about bringing a spare visor. I don't need to worry about the police getting involved late at night. Anything like that. And also, if the police do pull you over for having a tinted visor on, put it in the boot for five minutes, explain the situation, and they're more likely to be lenient on you because you've got the option of having a clear visor at night and in poor light conditions. I'm not saying it'll get you out of it, because if you're a dick, they'll probably still charge you for something, but it's going to help. Enough blabbering, let's get on to some comparisons. In all of these clips, I've got a towel over the top of the visors, and then I take that towel off, and that's when it starts reacting. Obviously UV doesn't really pass through the materials very much. They do slightly tint, but they're basically clear. So the first shot I'll show you is the one where it reacts from inside the helmet. Now, as you can see here, I mean, it's a GoPro inside my helmet, but you can barely see that it's changing color. When I flip up the visor, you'll see how much, tint, how much more tinted it is than it looks through the visor. So in this next shot, I'm gonna show you the full visor reacting in real time. So you can see actually how long it takes to change color. So the next shot here is the full visor. So if I lay a towel over half of this, it will show you the, the difference between the reaction and the non-reacted visor. Now, as soon as I take this towel off, you'll see that the visor starts reacting immediately. So in this next shot, I've got the pin lock reacting on its own. So this is how dark it goes without the visor in front of it. And then finally I'll finish up with this. This is a 10 minute time lapse, which is both of the visors together. The visors will get darker over time. Essentially, the longer they're exposed to light, the darker they get. But there's never a point where they're so dark that you can't see out of a mirror or it hampers your vision. So there we go, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, bit of a rundown, like I said, I know it's not an incredibly exciting video, but I wish someone had done this or something similar when I'd been looking at them because there's just not many videos out there for them. If you only keep your helmet for a year or two and you only ride it, you, and you only ride your bike maybe six months a year and not very often in the rain, one of these will work fine. It's cheaper, it's widely available, and it's not a bad option. If you're gonna keep your helmet for a couple of years and you're riding in all seasons, investing in a full visor does make a hell of a difference. So I hope that has been of interest to you. Um, please leave a comment down below if you've got any questions at all. I'll, I'll do my best to answer them. And I'll see you in the next one.